His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa regarding the graduation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's son, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa from the Britannia Royal Naval College of Dartmouth with honors distinction and the College Commander's Award. His Royal Highness expressed pride regarding the graduation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's son thanks to the constant support of His Majesty the King which would contribute in serving the kingdom and various levels. He also wished His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa further success in serving Bahrain and its citizens. In response, His Majesty the King sent a cable of thanks to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, wishing him abundant health, and His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa further success in serving the kingdom and its citizens. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, regarding the graduation of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa from the Britannia Royal Naval College with Honours Distinction and the College Commander's Award. His Royal Highness expressed his appreciation for His Majesty's constant support, wishing His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa further success and serving the kingdom. His Royal Highness wished His Majesty the King abundant health and success in achieving further progress and prosperity to the kingdom. In response, His Majesty the King sent a cable of thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, in which he expressed pride in the academic and military achievement, wishing His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa further success in serving the kingdom. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of good wishes to the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, marking his country's national day. His Majesty the King wished the Emir of Qatar good health and happiness, and the people of Qatar further progress and prosperity under its wise leadership. He also hailed strong bilateral relations linking the two countries and people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the graduation of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa from the Britannia Royal Naval College with Honours Distinction and the College Commander's Award. His Royal Highness the Premier hailed the outstanding achievement of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa who has set a bright image for ambitious Bahraini youth who aspire to excel and serve modern Bahrain. In response, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince sent a cable of thanks to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, in which he wished His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa success in serving the kingdom, and wished His Royal Highness the Prime Minister abundant health and success in serving Bahrain and its citizens. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of good wishes to the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, marking its country's national day. He wished the Emir of Qatar good health and happiness and his people further progress and prosperity. He also hailed strong and historic relations bonding the two countries and people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister sent a similar cable to the Qatari Prime Minister and Interior Minister His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Nasser bin Khalifa Al Thani on the occasion. The wife of His Majesty the King, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the graduation of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa from the Britannia Royal Naval College with Honours Distinction and the College Commander's Award. Her Royal Highness hailed the outstanding achievement of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who has set a bright image for ambitious Bahraini youth who aspire to excel and serve modern Bahrain. In response, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince sent a cable of thanks to the wife of His Majesty the King for her best wishes for Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa's success. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended yesterday the graduation ceremony of his son, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa from the Britannia Royal Naval College, the BRNC. On arrival, His Royal Highness was received by the Captain Henry Duffy, the commanding officer of the BRNC.
His Royal Highness then inspected the officer parade. On the occasion, His Royal Highness extended his congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad, the Supreme Commander of the Bahrain Defense Force, and His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness then highlighted His Highness Sheikh Isa's efforts during his training course, which he received the Captain's Award. He then extended his best wishes to His Highness Sheikh Isa, wishing him a prosperous future dedicated to the service of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad. His Royal Highness went on to express his deep pride for all Bahrainis committed to military service, particularly those serving in the Navy, noting its importance in protecting Bahrain and its future development and prosperity. In this regard, His Royal Highness emphasized the integral role the Bahrain World Naval Force, the BRNC, plays in maintaining the kingdom's security and stability, and highlighted the extraordinary efforts of the BRNF in maintaining regional security working alongside regional allies to successfully carry out counterterrorism and piracy operations. His Royal Highness went on to express his admiration of the BRNF and its personnel, noting that their exemplary capabilities and performance have safeguarded the country's gains. Speaking about bilateral ties, His Royal Highness then highlighted the long-standing strategic ties between Bahrain and the United Kingdom, which span over 200 years and across a wide range of sectors, including military and defense. He then highlighted the British Royal Navy's long-standing experience in training future British and international naval servicemen, noting their highly advanced curriculum and training programs, which Bahrain in particular continues to benefit from. Admiral Sir George Zambellis, first Sea Lord of the British Royal Navy, also addressed the parade in which he highlighted the leading role the British Na Royal Navy plays in promoting international security through mutual collaboration with the United Kingdom's partners and allies. In this regard, Admiral Zambellis noted that the establishment of a permanent British Royal Navy base in, Mina in the Mina Salman port area of Bahrain is a clear demonstration of the UK's commitment to renew its presence in the Gulf region to tackle shared regional threats. And the relationship that we've had over 200 years, it may seem to be a long time in many people's minds, but of course it is the mere flicker in the light of history. 
but I speak on behalf of the British people, the man in the street, when we wish you all success in your endeavours. We thank you for the generosity, compassion, the integrity, the honesty, and the courage that your country and His Majesty the King have shown. The Minister of Information Affairs Authority, Minister of Shura and Representative of Council Affairs, Mr. Isa Al Hamadi, lauded the public participation in the celebrations marking the National Day and His Majesty's 16th accession to the throne. He added that such participation reflects the bonding between the people and the leadership amid the continued developments and achievements the Kingdom is witnessing under the reign of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. While patronizing the National Day Cup at Rashid Equestrian Club, the minister highlighted the keenness of the ministry to cover all events and celebrations marking such occasions through using different media tools. The minister extended thanks and appreciation to the President of the Supreme Council for Rashid's Club for equestrian and horse racing, Sheikh Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa, and his deputies, Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for their support to sport activities and for their directives to ensure the success of the National Day Cup and the associated entertainment activities. Mr. Al Hamadi conveyed greetings to the leadership and the people of Bahrain on the occasion of the National Day celebrations, expressing pride in the development and achievement march in the kingdom in the various fields. UN-sponsored Yemen peace talks are struggling amid disputes over releasing prisoners as local officials reported intensifying clashes and fresh airstrikes despite a ceasefire. Sources close to the talk said Yemeni legitimate government representatives are demanding that their foes, the Iran-allied Houthi terrorist militias, release several senior officials, a demand rejected by the Houthis. UN Special Envoy for Yemen, Ismail Ould Sheikh Ahmed, said the third day of peace talks had produced a major step forward on the humanitarian front, agreement on aid for the war-torn city of Ta'az that would pave the way to further agreements on aid and other issues in coming days. Peace talks began on Tuesday away from television cameras in Switzerland to try to end nearly nine months of conflict that have killed almost 6,000 people and displaced millions. Meanwhile, spokesman of the Saudi-led Arab coalition, Brigadier General Ahmed al-Asiri, said the Iran-allied Houthis had repeatedly broken the ceasefire that was intended to last seven days and coincide with the peace talks. Brigadier General Asiri said coalition planes launched an airstrike on positions controlled by the Houthis and forces loyal to ousted President Ali Abdullah Saleh in the Nejd area of Surwa district after they repeatedly violated the ceasefire. Airstrikes also struck the northern Hajjah province on the border with Saudi Arabia. Residents said that gunboats struck Midi port also in Hajjah. In another development, the Yemeni government national forces seized the Al-Mas key military base from the Houthi terrorist militias in the central city of Ma'arab, following heavy clashes that left scores of the Houthi militiamen dead or injured. According to security officials, fighting also took place in the provinces of Ib, Beida and the besieged city of Ta'az where shelling by Houthis killed six civilians. An Israeli human rights group accused Israeli security forces of using excessive and unwarranted force in the killing of some Palestinians who were suspected of attacking Israelis during the current wave of violence. According to B'Tislim, Israeli soldiers and police officers fired at some Palestinian assailants even after they were wounded and posed no further threat. During the current wave of violence, at least 115 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli fire. The bloodshed has been fueled by Muslim opposition to stepped-up Israeli access to Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, Islam's third holiest site. International condemnation of Israel's action in occupied Palestinian territory has intensified, and foreign powers have expressed concern over Israel's excessive use of force. Politicians make it very clear that they uh, expect all assailants to be killed. It's been uh, stated again and again publicly by um, high-ranking police and 
mil uh, and military uh, officers, but also by political leaders. This kind of public climate that basically um, allows for the continued use of lethal force, the killing of suspects, even while they're posing, n no longer posing a danger, is at the essence of what we've been seeing uh, on the streets of Israel. Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails are launching hunger strikes in different jails for ill treatment and inhumane conditions. Some of them are being held in solitary confinement that is known for its very harsh conditions and unacceptable hygiene standards. More in the following story. Israel's ill treatment and abuse of Palestinian detainees is systematic and vast. Most detainees report being beaten, kicked, threatened, and having their homes illegally searched and confiscated. Therefore, many of the detainees resort to hunger striking. The Palestinian Prisoners Society said that prisoners near Hawara Neblis launched a strike in protest of violations carried out by Israel's prison service. The arrest center near Hawara is usually not fit to receive many detainees. The daily life and humanitarian conditions are very difficult. Palestinian prisoners there suffer from lack of minimum life requirements, such as provision of blankets and clothing, especially now in winter season. There is the case of overcrowding in this wet prison cell that does not serve living conditions. And recently, 21 prisoners held a hunger strike in this jail for prison overcrowding. According to a committee for Palestinian prisoners and former prisoners, a Palestinian prisoner, Nuruddin Amar, is being held in solitary confinement. Harsh detention conditions and interrogation centers include the use of solitary confinement. They are often used as means of exerting psychological pressure on the detainee. The often windowless individual cells only contain a mattress and a Turkish toilet falling short of acceptable hygiene standards. Detainees are prevented from communicating with their family or having access to books or media. Solitary confinement policy is a policy followed by Israeli prison administration for Palestinian prisoners and detainees. It is an isolation punishment for 15 days, adding security isolation, which is a decision made by Israeli intelligence services and is renewed automatically for a six-month period, and the prisoners are in total isolation in a narrow nine-meter cell. All central prisons holding passing prisoners are located outside of the OPT. In most of these prisons, there's overcrowding, a lack of very basic amenities, poor hygiene, and a significant lack of fresh air. In recent years, the average living space per prisoner has dropped from 3.4 to 2.9 square meters. 6,700 Palestinians are held in Israeli jails, and around 25 of them are in confinement and isolations. Many rights groups consider this as violations under international law. Hibasan for Bahrain Television, Ramallah. U.S. President Barack Obama said that U.S. intelligence and counterterrorism officials don't have any specific credible information suggesting a potential terror attack against the U.S. during the holidays. In comments during a visit to the National Counterterrorism Center in Virginia, Obama said the U.S. would continue to fight ISIL militants overseas to prevent terrorists from entering the United States and step up efforts to prevent attacks at home. At this moment, our intelligence and counterterrorism professionals do not have any specific and credible information about an attack on the homeland. We're constantly adapting, constantly improving, upping our game, getting better. And today, the mission to protect our homeland goes on on three main fronts. First, we're going after terrorists over there, where they plot and plan and spew their propaganda. As I described at the Pentagon, we're hitting ISIL harder than ever in Syria and Iraq. We are taking out their leaders. Our partners on the ground are fighting to push ISIL back, and ISIL has been losing territory. Our special operations forces are hard at work. We took out the ISIL leader in Libya. We've taken out terrorists in Yemen and Somalia. So we're sending a message. If you target Americans, you will have no safe haven. We will find you, and we will defend our nation. The UN Security Council yesterday unanimously adopted a resolution aimed at disrupting revenue that the ISIL extremist group gets from oil and antiquities sales, ransom payments, and other criminal activities, a goal that finance ministers agree will be challenging. The resolution, which was sponsored by the United States and Russia, elevates ISIL to the same level as Al-Qaeda, reflecting its growing global threat. 
The resolution stressed that any individual, group, undertaking, or entity supporting ISIL or Al-Qaeda is subject to UN sanctions, including an asset freeze, travel ban, and arms embargo. Just as terrorist groups are innovating and diversifying, the international community must stay ahead of the curve to combat money laundering and the financing of terrorism. Doing so will not be easy. Many states have yet to establish the necessary legal regimes, institutions, and expertise to identify and freeze terrorist financing and assets. Implementation of key Security Council resolutions on this subject remains weak in many parts of the world. The private sector and civil society are often left outside the circle of consensus building and trust thus becoming a potential weak link. U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter is in Afghanistan to assess the fragile security situation amid reports of increased violence and a growing campaign by ISIL group loyalists to gain a foothold in the eastern part of the country. Carter's visit comes as his top commander there, General John Campbell, voiced concerns that foreign fighters from Syria and Iraq are joining with Afghans who have declared loyalty to ISIL in the east near the Pakistani border. Officials have been war warning for some time that while the presence of ISIL has been small, it is attracting disaffected members of the Taliban. Campbell and an Associated Press interview said supporters of ISIL are trying to establish a regional base in Jalalabad. Fueling those concerns is a new Pentagon report saying that the Taliban has been emboldened by the reduced U.S. military presence in Afghanistan and attacks increased this year. And now we turn to Danielle with the latest business news. Thanks very much, Shadia. A very good evening and welcome to the business news here on Bahrain Television. The Central Bank of Bahrain has decided to raise its interest rate on its overnight deposit facility, its key policy interest rate, to 0.5% from 0.25%,